<sighs> mm. Some good coffee right there. Got a bit chilly in here, so I decided to grab some coffee. Plus, you know those days where you don't feel as motivated or inspired or you're just kind of exhausted. Coffee uh, gives you that boost of energy, even the smell of it boosts, boosts energy. Speaking of feeling energized, shout out to X Team for sponsoring this video. The most energized community for developers. X Team is this really dope company that offers remote developer opportunities from literally everywhere around the world. Like you can literally work anywhere you want. The X Team is an international remote company where they help major brands like Twitter, Dell, Discovery, and more scale their development teams. A few things that particularly make X Team stand out and why I'm so excited to be able to talk with you about them today are the benefits that they offer to their developers that help create an amazing community and how they truly light this fire into their community of devs, creating this positive energy which motivates their developers to create and to innovate, ultimately changing the world. They have roaming hacker houses, which are a pretty fascinating benefit, allowing developers to live and do their work in some of the most beautiful places around the world, which is another example of how X Team fosters this sense of adventure and community. One thing that I value is being able to work for a company that is flexible and encourages me to spend time on the things that I'm most passionate about. X Team offers Unleashed Plus, which is essentially a stipend to do that very thing. Spend money on the things you love. So whether that's a gym membership, photography gear, or that sick new one speed gravel bike you've always wanted. Clearly X Team wants their developers to have a healthy work-life balance. I definitely value that. And that's so important when it comes to the longevity of your career as a developer. They're looking for developers with a wide range of technologies from you know Node.js, JavaScript, Python, Go, DevOps, and much more. Join X Team by selecting this link that will be down in the description box. And once again, thank you to X Team for sponsoring this video. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to my channel. My name is Jossie Lin J. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the five reasons why you shouldn't become a software engineer. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and become a part of this community where we talk about software development. We talk about, you know, some of the latest tech and we have some lifestyle videos here and there. And hopefully when the pandemic is in our rear view mirrors, I'll be doing more travel stuff because I love making, you know, cinematic videos. And I try to add cinematics, you know, in my videos here and there because it's something I really love and I'm really passionate about. I want to preface this video with saying that by no means should any of these reasons deter you. I'm just going to share um, the more, I guess, negative sides, uh, the cons of being a software engineer. All right. The first reason why you shouldn't become a software engineer is if you're doing it for just the bread. So if you're just doing it for a bag, um, for those of you all who aren't understanding any of my slang, becoming a software engineer for the money. Doing anything for the money is just kind of cringy. I mean, I understand it by all means, like you want to become a software engineer. And one of one of the main reasons, not the main reason or the reason is because you know that you're going to, you know, make six figures at some point in time or even starting out. I understand it's one of the main reasons why I pursued it, because I knew that it was a very secure job with a lot of opportunities. However, this is the worst job to do if you could care less about coding and you just want to do it for money. Unless you're someone who's really disciplined, really freaking smart, that won't fare well. The main reason is because programming is like, it's a skill. Like, it's not like a skill, it is a skill. Like dribbling a basketball and shooting a basketball or throwing a football is a skill. Programming is a skill. And if you wanna become a professional who does it eight hours and some days 10 hours a day, then you're gonna have to enjoy it. I don't know too many athletes who only play basketball for the money. It's usually they just love it and then they end up being really good and then they make money. 
So think of programming that way. On top of that, since it's a skill set, it's something that you continuously have to work on. Doing it for the money will only hurt you because of that risk of stagnation. Oh, and before we continue, I uh, did a post, a community post um, on my channel. I don't know why that sounds so funny. Or basically I was asking you all, are you interested in me doing one of those like lo-fi, chill, like study with me, code with me, be productive with me kind of videos where it's like, you know, 45 minutes or an hour or really even two hours. And really it's just a loop of me um, coding and stuff like that. So <laughs> comment down below or give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see that content. Also, my wife and I are working on a dedicated channel for lo-fi, chill, like beats, um, where it's just like a really dope cinematic shot. linked that channel below. It's called Aesthetic Lee, and I'd love for you all to subscribe to that. Um, I think you'll love it, especially all you developers and really just anybody, why did my voice get so high? Really just anybody who um, wants to see more of that type of content and uh, wants to be productive and, and study and code or whatever. Yes, the next reason, the lack of diversity. Yeah, I'm usually the only uh, black person um, in the room, <laughs> in the department, on the team. I mean, there were times where there was other, there was another developer uh, that was black or, you know, a person of color or a few people of color, but typically it, it lacks diversity uh, significantly, which could be a problem because if uh, everyone looks the same and talks the same and, and thinks the same, you know, are interested in all the same things, then, um, you know, that lack of diversity can cause people to feel, you know, isolated or not, you know, appreciated or really a part of the group. Believe it or not, that lack of diversity is what inspired me to become an engineer, let alone a software engineer. And now I'm able to motivate and inspire others who look more like me to become software engineers. So hopefully within the next, you know, decade, the diversity can increase. To give you an example, women of color only make up 4% of the tech industry. Uh, they actually make up 16% of the general US population. And there are hardly any who are actually senior level. Also check out this chart. As you can see, the tech industry is dominated by white men. And the overall diversity is also reflected within leadership as well. So it can almost feel sometimes like it's closed to outsiders. My recommendation is to work for a company that loves you for you and is a company that embraces diversity because it's very, very important. And as mentioned earlier, as a black man, um, you can feel very, you know, alone, especially in the tech industry. Um, so hopefully things get better. Next thing, the next thing, coding and technical interviews. <sighs> Probably the most frustrating part of becoming a software engineer. Hey, uh, can you tell us what uh, P equals? Um, um, I don't, I don't know what what P equals. It's fine. We'll just, we'll just move on to the next question. Thanks for taking the time out to uh, interview us. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I graduated from college two years ago with a computer science degree, and um, I'm currently working as a full stack developer. Um, I've got some experience with Node.js and building, you know, web applications. Okay, thanks for letting us know about who you are and what you've done. Uh, let's move on to the technical questions. Yes, there are tons of opportunities that pay extremely well, but seems like most people aren't qualified or, or don't do well enough in the technical interview to actually get those jobs. So that's probably why so many remain open or are fulfilled by the same type of people. Technical interviews are annoying. Beef that I have with technical interviews is that they don't reflect how good of a developer that person is. It's so funny that these companies are like, yeah, we wanna hire great developers who are great people and we, we care about your experience. Now, let's keep it real. Experience is what gets you the interview. 
after that, no one could care, they could care less about what your experience is um, for the most part. And that goes out the window if you don't do well in the coding interview, if you don't answer this question that maybe the interview doesn't even know the answer to, or something that has absolutely nothing to do with the job that you're applying for. That's always so interesting to me is to give someone this technical interview, tell them to study data structures, algorithms, um, you know, you need to know problem solving with, you know, whatever your favorite programming language is. And then you go to the interview and they don't ask you data structures or algorithms and they ask you something random, some random uh, problem where you have to manipulate some sort of array, like a, like a palindrome or something. Not the most difficult question, but if you were focusing on data structures and algorithms 50% of the time, maybe your problem solving skill sets aren't as good. So why don't you just actually give us data structures, algorithms, and problem solving, which is a little bit more holistic from a technical standpoint, but I digress. I know I went on a rant there, but I appreciate all the companies that actually give you technical interviews where it's like, hey, there's this problem and um, you can use the internet because everyone uses the internet on their on a day-to-day -day basis as a developer. That's why Stack Overflow and GitHub and open source. One of the reasons that kind of goes without like being said about why you shouldn't become a, you know, a developer um, or software engineer is if you don't want a job that is too difficult um, or really too demanding. And the interesting thing about software development is that some weeks, some quarters or sprints, you don't have a ton of work to do and you're kind of like, uh, you know, fiddling with your thumbs. Is that, is it fiddling with your thumbs? But you don't have a lot of work to do. But then some weeks, some sprints or even quarters, you have a lot of work to get done. And it's not, you know, talking to a customer, you know, getting documentation done that, you know, doesn't take a lot of brain power and you're just putting it in a system that, handles everything. Software development can be very difficult. A lot of times the problems that are being solved have never been solved before. I remember when I first started working as a uh, full stack developer, one of the um, features I had to create um, didn't exist. And the template for it in the code base didn't exist. Cause a lot of times as a junior developer, you'll hop on a project and there'll already be like a template of how to build out, you know, a feature. Sometimes you don't know what you're actually building and it could take a very long time. I remember working on a feature for literally like almost a whole quarter. And if you aren't motivated and inspired, um, or if you don't want to think too hard, if you don't want to have headaches, you know, sometimes at least twice a week, um, during, you know, some periods of time, then this job wouldn't be for you because it's going to get more and more complex. And that's where the passion comes in. If you want to grow as a developer, then you're passionate about solving things that have never been solved before. Sometimes your manager has no clue how much work it actually takes or the project manager or product owner or or the, the stakeholders have absolutely no idea how much work it takes. Sometimes you'll be working overtime, like a lot of overtime. I've done eight to eight before, <laughs> but um, I love development and it's rewarding to build something that works good and looks great, or let's say <laughs> works great and looks great. So the functionality is is perfect. The, the user experience is, is excellent and seamless. You'll be debugging code and you have no idea why the code is breaking. So it's almost like you have to build the thing all over again. You technically don't, but you have to, um, you have to think that way. You have to start from the beginning. You got to figure out how to fix that bug in literally like no less than a couple days at the most. So there's a lot of pressure and you have to figure it out because you can't lose this customer. It's not like sales where you can negotiate a price to keep the customer. You actually have to figure out why they're experiencing this bug. Last but not least is if you are a big people person, which I am, but I do enjoy just focusing on my work at hand and not having really any meetings or 
really needing to interact with a lot of people. You're gonna be focusing on software development and programming. Like that's gonna be your main job as an entry level developer. Um, granted, after like three to five years, developers typically branch off to different, you know, career paths um, or senior leadership. Some people wanna become senior developers, some people wanna become managers, some people are interested in the product itself from a business standpoint. But for the first three to five years, you're gonna be doing a lot of work in solitude because your main job as a junior developer is to really just code. You're not making a lot of the high level decisions because you either haven't worked at the company long enough or you just don't have enough experience with that specific product. So those are the five reasons why you shouldn't become a software engineer. I just want to reiterate that this should not deter you from becoming a software engineer because everyone has their own path and there's so many different companies that offer different opportunities. But that concludes this video. Give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. Comment down below some of your thoughts about programming and being a dev or computer science major. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd love for you all to become a part of the community. Once again, thank you to X-Team for sponsoring this video. I'll see you all soon. Have a blessed rest of your week. Stay safe and healthy. Peace.